Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So I just recently made my best top 5 assassins for the mid lane video and I thought it's definitely time to update the top 5 AP mid laners as well. Not only because I haven't done it for a decent amount of time, but the list is actually quite different than before. Obviously there will be some similarities here and there, but there are definitely a decent amount of new faces being shown. So the champions in this list are either just quite strong at the moment and or are very very good for the meta. So as usual guys remember that this list is composed of a mix of my personal opinions on top of statistics and what's just performing well all around in all regions. Now right before we start things off and get right into the number 5 spot the question of the video is what AP mage do you believe to be the strongest at the very moment? And if you end up enjoying this video make sure to hit that like button. Alright guys, so let's start things off with the number 5 spot where we will be talking about Aurelian Saw, the newest champion. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering exactly how strong is this new champion? Is he someone that I should be maybe putting in some time to learning and really just understanding? Well he definitely feels quite strong to the point where Riot is already placing some nerfs for him on the PBE server, stating that the higher elo players or people that have already invested a lot of time into learning him are actually performing quite well. And that could be a mix of just people not understanding how to play against him yet and also it could be just because his his W and his passive is actually quite broken with Rylai's Crystal Scepter. So you get Rod of Ages, you get Rylai's Crystal Scepter, your W is going to be constantly dealing a lot of damage, especially mid to late game. It's really hard to avoid and the constant slow being applied is quite obnoxious. On top of this, his Q ability being an AoE stun that he can throw out several times within a team fight can quite honestly just make or break a team fight. And the combination of his Q and his E ability together when it comes to maybe initiating initiating a fight, catching someone off, or just ganking a lane from mid lane is very very strong. To me personally, the part that Aurelian Saul just flat out excels at is team fights. He's a very control oriented type mage. So again, if you do have the Rylize and you have the Rod of Ages, not only are you tanky, but you're dealing a lot of damage. Your W is just constantly being thrown out there in the middle of the team fight. People always have to look out for it, have to play around with it in mind. And it really just adds a whole extra layer of something that the enemy team has to worry about constantly. So he scales really, really well just because of his W and the amount of constant damage it will push out. His ultimate, even though I don't think it's the most overpowered thing in the world whatsoever, the damage on it is fairly okay, but the main thing is the range is quite nice and the slow is very very useful. It helps you to kite, it helps you to chase people down and also it sets up your W quite beautifully. His laning phase honestly isn't even all that bad, even though last hitting and overall just harassing your opponent properly with the proper combo can be a little bit awkward if you're not used to it. However, the cons of this Star God is the fact that while well, his passive, even though it is quite strong, will make him visible within a bush, so hiding in a bush to try and assassinate someone is just not a possibility. He's also somewhat of a mid-range caster, now that's not necessarily flat out a bad thing, especially since you do build fairly tanky for your items, but it does leave you a little bit more vulnerable to making mistakes and dying off of it. I still personally think his ult is a little bit of a letdown, mainly because just with his lore and how he is a star god and all that stuff, I expected something absolutely just awesome looking. That's not to say that his ultimate is bad, but it's not amazing either. It's just a fairly good ability. But other than that, I really do feel like Aurelian Saul deserves a number 5 spot. I do recommend putting some time into him, whether it's learning him or learning how to play against him, because he does have a lot of potential in teamfights. And here are my recommended runes, items, and all that good stuff when it comes to playing Aurelian Saul. And moving along to the number 4 spot is a familiar face, Twisted Fate. It's very difficult to make a top 5 AP mid lane list and not have Twisted Fate somewhere in there. This guy is just flat out designed for solo queue, I mean his ultimate is literally made to help out your other lanes, help out somewhere in the jungle, help both of you snowball and just give control to the game. He isn't necessarily just a strong champion because of the current meta with being tanky champions and Zraw portals and all that stuff everywhere. He's good right now just because of how good of a champion he is for solo queue. His W still offers him the fantastic options whether you need more mana and damage for the blue card, AoE control slow with his red card or a single target lockdown with a gold card. His passive which in my opinion is among the best passives in the entire game offers him so much bonus gold whenever he CSs that it's almost a little too unfair. Also if you're facing an assassin in the mid lane, well Twisted Fate has been very popular with the Rod of Ages build so that gives you a lot of tank 
tankiness while not really sacrificing too much damage. Since he's not very mobile of a champion, the Rod of Ages tankiness is very, very useful. He's an easy champion to play, he has a strong kid, his Q ability deals full damage to every single target hit, and it also has fairly good range, which naturally also offers him good wave clear. Lich Bay not only being a core item on Twisted Fate, but it also now offers cooldown as of several patches ago, but it also adds so much damage to his kid when combined with his W and his E, that you can almost count him as an assassin type champion. Overall Twisted Fate, he is still Twisted Fate, he hasn't really got nerfed, nothing significant has changed about him, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because he just works. He's a champion you pick with confidence because you know he's going to be more or less useful throughout this game. However, the negatives of Twisted Fate is QSS flat out counters his W ability, he has no escapes in his skit which can be a little bit annoying but thankfully Rod of Ages helps you with the tankiness. And he's a very macro oriented control type mage, so you will have to be always looking at your minimap, always looking for the ability to make plays with your ultimate. If you don't, you are going to be pretty useless. But regardless, here are the runes, the masteries and all that good stuff whenever it comes to playing Twisted Fate. And finally, the top 3 champions I'll be talking about in this video and the first one being Vel'Koz. Here's a champion I feel like a lot of people probably did not expect to see on this list, especially ranked quite high. So I feel like a part of this comes from Faker, because Faker apparently played this and he played it to success and made a lot of people realize that you know what, Vel'Koz is actually quite strong, people started playing him and everyone started realizing that Man, he's actually quite strong. But that's only part of it. I feel like the other part as to why he's really good right now is the fact that the meta just suits him. Even though Titanic Hydra got nerfed, I feel like it is still a very popular and very, very strong item. And the other thing is a lot of tanky champions are building Zraw Portal, giving them a lot of magic resistance and just being really difficult to kill for a lot of AP mid laners. Well luckily for us, Vel'Koz's passive is quite literally designed to go right through that, dealing true damage. He's made to shred tanks and there has been quite an influx of these types of champions, very annoyingly I might add. On top of this, Rylai's Crystal Scepter seems to be becoming a lot more of a popular item and it works on Vel'Koz quite exceptionally. Vel'Koz throws spell after spell after spell and always having Rylai's Crystal Scepter's slow apply to the target means that it is so easy to consistently land all of your spells one after the other, dealing a lot of damage and also of course stacking up your passive. If there is just a flat out abundance of tanks on the enemy team then Void Staff and also Leandri's Torment are quite good. He provides some nice wave clear for his team, his E ability is essentially an AoE knockback type ability and personally I think his ultimate is very 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 strong because not only does it have good range, it has good damage, it applies your passive very quickly and it has a really nice slow attached to it as well. So essentially he's just a champion that deals a ridiculous amount of damage, provides true damage with his passive to shred through tanks, especially ones that stack an abundance of magic resistance. Rise Crystal Scepter feels very obnoxious on him and he overall just fits the meta very nicely. However the cons of this tentacle man is the fact that he has no escapes in his kit, he is purely skill shot oriented which Rylai's Crystal Scepter helps with. He is fairly squishy since usually you will not be building Rod of Ages. And his ultimate, even though I do think it's fantastic, is a channel type ability so the enemy team can definitely stop you from being able to finish it off. But either way guys, I feel like Vel'Koz is finally deserving of the number 3 spot in my top 5 list rather than always being stuck in my underrated list. And just like with the other champions, here are my recommended runes, items and all that good stuff whenever playing this tentacle monster. And finally, at the number 2 spot, we are going to be giving it to Malzahar. The reasons for Malzahar being this high up on this list, on top of also being a champion you probably did not expect to see, is very similar to Vel'Koz. He is just flat out strong in the current meta. He has ridiculously high AP ratios, especially on his ultimate. His W has percent damage, and he also works very very well with Rylai's Crystal Scepter and Rod of Ages. Just like Vel'Koz, if they have a flat abundance of tankiness, then why not also go for the Leandri's Torment on top of your Deathfire Touch. Essentially, if you get all of these items with the Keystone Mastery, your E ability is going to be one of the most empowered stacked up abilities in the entire game. So he scales quite well and he's also able to lock down a target with his ultimate very easily. His laning phase is also quite strong because it is just so easy to play. You just spam abilities, use your E ability on the enemy minions, summon your passive Voidling and it'll be hard for the person you're laning against to go ham on you because they have to worry 
about pushing the wave back into their favor. His Q ability still offers that really nice AoE silence, and like I said, his Voidling will actually hurt quite a bit, especially if they're attacking a target that you are ulting with your E ability on them and your W as well. However, the cons of Malzahar also no escapes in his kit, though luckily for him, he does build Rod of Ages, so he will be somewhat tanky. Just like Velkos, his ultimate is also a channel, so it can be interrupted. Not the best of AoE abilities in the entire game, other than his Q. And there are going to be certain times where the Voidling can just give away your position and can make things very annoying. But just like the other champions, here are the recommended runes, items, and overall build whenever you're playing Malzahar. And finally, moving to the number one spot is going to be Ari once again. She's back. Apparently that charm nerf just was not anywhere near enough to ruin her. Because Ari is still the well-rounded mage that she always was and probably always will be. She's also a good meta pick because she has true damage in her Q. She has fantastic cash potential with her E ability. She has sustain in lane with her passive. She has wave clear with her Q. She has single target damage with her W. Great synergy with her W and ultimate. Her ultimate gives her a lot of mobility and also does good damage as well. I mean, I feel like I say this every single time, but it's just so true. She has so much in her kit. She's just an overall well-rounded mage offering a lot to the team, and you can't really ever go wrong into picking this champion. I'm not going to be spending too much time talking about Ari because I feel like I've talked about her so much in these top five lists, but I'll say it one more time. She's a well-rounded mage that just offers a lot to the team, while also being surprisingly still good and effective in the current meta. But the bad sides of Sorry, her charm did get nerfed, but it's still very much useful. Her Q ability is really her only long ranged poke type ability and she doesn't have the biggest burst in the world unless of course you are just flat out fed. But here are the recommended runes, items and masteries for Ari just like the other champions. But that is about it for this video guys, I mean there you have it, the updated top 5 AP mid laners list, a lot of new faces being shown, just because of how strong they are in the current meta with those raw tanks running around wrecking havoc. But I hope you guys did learn something new, got a better idea on what champions you should be playing in terms of the AP mid laners. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button, share with your friends, check out my other videos as well, subscribe if you haven't, all of that good stuff. And here are my favorite comments from the previous videos question asking you what you think about the Zed nerfs. But I thank each and every one of you for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Peace.